Hey out there, I'm David Miller, Phoenix, Arizona multimedia artist and educator. I want to show you some cool stuff you can do with Adobe Character Animator. It's a motion capture animation program. It's tied to Adobe After Effects, so if you already own After Effects or are subscribed to the full Creative Cloud, you already have Adobe Character Animator. Uh, I've been using this for motion capture puppets in my own short films, my tutorials. I've been using it for a lot of stuff over the last few years. But last weekend, I decided I actually want to use it for something that's just pure fun, and I want to make my own versions of the X-Men, and I want to give them some superpowers. Of course, I recorded this for a full tutorial, so if you're interested in learning more about Character Animator or Motion Comics, I have tutorials on my teaching channels. The links to those are in the info below this video. But in the meantime, check out how I rigged and gave powers to uh, one of the classic X-Men, Wolverine. Okay, I now have Wolverine on the screen. Wolverine is a character who is supposed to be a short, scrappy fighter. When I was reading the comics, he was definitely not the leader of the team. He was like the, the guy that mouthed off to the leader, which is Cyclops. He, uh, so he's very argumentative, and also he could go crazy in a fight and he might turn on his own teammates because he could go in this berserker rage and then somebody would have to calm him down. It's not too dissimilar to the way the Hulk is portrayed in the Avengers movies, um, but I really like that version of Wolverine. I've never been a big fan of, you know, Wolverine is the leader of the team just because it takes away from what made him cool to begin with. Same with knowing all this information about his origin. Uh, so I've designed him, I gave him kind of a goofy look because I tend to do that with serious characters. And now I'm just making sure that all the items are in the right place when I do my Photoshop hierarchy. To get a blink for Wolverine, I've taken his eyebrow, I've darkened it with curves, and then I've copied it over and reflected it to get the left eyebrow. Almost all your eye components go in an eye group folder. The eyebrows should be independent and not in the eye group folder. Um, when you have things in a group, like the head, you're saying you want everything in this group to move at the same time, but you can have independent layers like independent eyes within that group that will move on their own, but they won't float off of the head. Now I'm adding some shading to my character, and to do this, I use blending options, inner shadow, and once I have a layer style that I like on a particular segment, I can copy layer style and then paste it onto all the other layers. So we've imported Wolverine into Character Animator. We're checking our rigging, and uh, the best way to do this is to literally go straight down all of your layers. Like I noticed this eye group, uh, there seems to be pixels on the side that don't belong to the people. It shouldn't be that big of a rectangle. So having gone back to Photoshop and erased out, uh, I was able to fix that area. I reposition the anchor or rotation points make sure things are rotating where they need to be. This is really common when you get to like an arm group and you see that the rotation is never on the shoulder where it belongs, it's just sitting in the middle of the arm. Need to move the rotation points of his legs up to the hips. Put some bones in there. Wolverine has a pretty wide power set. He has enhanced senses, he has his claws that retract. He has a healing factor, he has unbreakable bones, and he has his berserker rage. So some of those I'm able to think of animations for, uh, mainly the claws and the berserker rage. I probably could animate in some wounds that would appear and disappear on him. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna do that because in my mind, if he got in a bunch of fights, the wounds would appear at different areas of his body and and uh, I just don't feel like making gory characters with these guys. I feel like keeping them super cartoony and almost like uh, if Disney XD were to make a version of the X-Men, this is the kind of thing they might have on, like the Phineas and Ferb X-Men. 
I have draggables on his arms, on his hand anchors, and that allows me to pull his hands up and manipulate them. I think he's got a really cute walk cycle. Having short legs and a big upper torso looks pretty fun in Character Animator. The walk cycles have more than just walk to them. You can have your character sneak, run, headbang, uh, several other things. And there's a lot of parameters you can adjust. Each character should have their own type of walk cycle in my mind. I don't think it makes sense for them all to walk exactly the same. When I make any of my behavioral adjustments, I use the behaviors that notate that it's to the character, it's to the head. All of these I assigned in rig mode. If you are messing with their behaviors outside of rig mode and it doesn't say uh, character or head or body in the parentheses, then those behaviors will function in the particular character animator scenario you have set up. But if you export the puppet, like if I export a puppet file of Wolverine, none of those behaviors will stay with him. Only the behaviors that you assign in rig mode. So my advice to you is if you're going to make any changes to the face, if you're going to make any changes to eye gaze, or even a dragger, uh, you should assign those behaviors entirely in rig mode as I'm doing, rather than changing the dragger in the regular record menu, exporting your puppet, and then realizing that he didn't keep those behaviors with him. Now I want to assign him the ability to have his claws go in and out. I want them to slide in and out on command with a trigger. So I'm going over to Photoshop, I'm cloning his claws, and I'm slightly moving them in and erasing out the excess that appears behind his little uh, claw. Uh, extenders, those gray things that are on his knuckles. I'm gonna do this a few times. Each time I'm getting a version of the claws that's further and further up into his glove. And what I'm ultimately going to do is create a cycle layers loop that will be activated when I hit the letter X. When you create cycle layers, either it can cycle continuously or it can cycle once and hold on the last layer. So that's my plan. I want these to extend once and hold on the last layer. And I'm also going to assign forward and reverse, which means that when you hit X again, they'll retract. So X to extend and hold, X to retract and hold. So I currently have five layers, one with no claws, one with them partially out, one with them midway out, a little further, and then all the way. I'm gonna blur some of the middle layers just to make them look like they're going a little bit faster. I'm using motion blur and having it extend in the exact direction the claws pop out. Create my trigger, add cycle layers behavior. It's going to go forward and reverse, hold on last layer, give it the letter X, and let's see what it looks like. I think I might have too many layers in this. It seems like it's coming out really slow. And generally, in these tutorial videos, I have them sped up so it may appear pretty fast to you. But I think that uh, five layers is too many to have. So I'm gonna take away one layer and see how that looks. Still a little bit slow. I think ultimately what I'm going to need is just a single interstitial frame of uh, Wolverine extending his claws. So he starts with nothing, he has one that's halfway, and then he has one that extends all the way. There, I'm a lot happier with this animation. Now I want Wolverine to fly into a rage as a trigger. The only thing that's really going to make this any different is uh, my imagination and 
the amount of cycle layers that I need to create. I want his eyes to have spirals to them. I want his pupils to change shape and possibly color. I want him to have a set of looping mouths where his tongue wags around and he looks more feral. And I want him to have foam that froths from his mouth. No, I won't give in till I reach the end and then I'll start again. No, I won't leave. I want to try everything. I want to try even though I could fail. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more creative tutorials, gear reviews and video art. Also check out our Patreon for weekly bonus videos and model photography sets.